Uh, today I will discuss a topic which should have been discussed a little earlier when we did Langevin dynamics, but which is somewhat formal and mathematical and not directly connected to the rest of the topics that we had done earlier. But it is very crucial now becoming more and more important in the context of uh, uh, non-equilibrium phenomena, specific stochastic models of them and therefore I thought I should at least mention briefly what it is all about. It has to do with uh, our old friend Brownian motion and if you recall, so let me start by uh, recalling a few facts about Brownian motion. If you recall we wrote down the Langevin equation for some Cartesian component of a particle of mass m moving in a fluid and to quickly recapitulate what we had, we had a formula like V dot plus gamma V is equal to 1 over M eta of T everything like this where this was Gaussian Markov stationary white noise and uh, we also discovered there was a relation between the correlation the strength of this force and the friction constant gamma. If you put that in we could write this then we had a capital gamma here. So, this would go to 2 gamma k Boltzmann T over m times zeta of T where this white noise had the following properties. It had uh, 0 mean and zeta of T zeta of T prime was equal to just a delta function delta of T minus T prime. I slurred over the fact that this quantity is not very well defined, it is too singular in some sense in a strict mathematical sense. So, we will come to terms with that now and do this a little better than what we did earlier. Now, of course, in the diffusion regime what happens is you are at long times t com compared to uh, gamma inverse and then the effect of this inertia get term gets negligible and this term dominates here. So, let me go straight away to the diffusion regime and write the equation in the diffusion what we call the diffusion regime or equivalently high friction very high friction. This equation gets replaced by x dot equal to square root of 2 d times zeta of t because recall that d was k t over m gamma. If I divide through by gamma after neglecting this you get precisely 2 d here. So, all the factors are right. Now, this is not a very comfortable equation to work with because it is too singular an object. So, mathematicians like to write this in the following form and I will define this term. So, this is written as d x equal to square root of 2 d times d w this is called a Wiener process the, uh, the W of t is called a Wiener process and let us write that down. I should put a t inside the bracket really as physicists would, but mathematicians like to put it as a subscript because more notationally easier to handle there okay. and the practice standard practice is to set 2 d equal to 1. So, you rescale matters in such a way that 2 d is equal to 1 and then it is called standard Brownian motion. So, standard Brownian motion or equivalently a Wiener process. It is a Gaussian Markov process that is delta correlated. 
uh, that is correlated in a specific manner which I will uh, derive in a second. Okay. This Gaussian Markov process eminently has most notable property is that it is not stationary. non stationary it is a continuous process that is important. Okay. With the following property okay. essentially it is this x and x we recall is the position instantaneous position of a particle diffusing on the x axis with the diffusion constant d and the probability density function of this x obeys the standard diffusion equation delta p over delta t is d times delta 2 p over delta x 2. But for this process here we have set 2 d equal to 1 it is clear that for this w so the pdf uh, pdf of x satisfies of w say. satisfies delta over delta t let me just call it rho equal to 1 half delta to rho over delta x2 okay. pardon me w of t is not white noise it is the integral of white noise because in a crude sense quote unquote dwt equal to zeta of t dt. So, w of t that is what I did here when I wrote this as dwt. We have to be careful about what I mean by this differential and that is the whole point right. So, in this heuristic way of looking at it this w of t is like the integral of white noise because that is what zeta of t is. But the problem is that zeta of t is not a well defined mathematical object. It is got a singular covariance, it is got a singular correlation function, a delta function, which is not pleasant. Okay. Now, think of what so W of t is essentially x, the position of a diffusing particle, okay. that is it, apart from this uh, constant here. But think we know already what this guy does, we know that it is not a stationary process, and if the particle starts from 0, the origin at t equal to 0, then the position is a Gaussian uh, distributed by a Gaussian with the variance increasing linearly with time etcetera. And we also know that this process has an autocorrelation function hmm, which eminently is not stationary which tells you so w t w t prime the average is equal to do you recall what it is? Yeah, the minimum the lesser of the 2. Now, we have set this 2d equal to 1. So, with that normalization it is minimum of t t prime. We are only considering positive values of t and t prime right. So, it is clearly not stationary because the autocorrelation function has this behavior here. So, let me let me stick to standard notation write this. And this uh, chap here has got the standard Gaussian solution if you recall this is uh, implies fundamental solution rho equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi t e to the minus x square root. I have set again at 2 d equal to 1. Okay. So, this is where it came from. Now, let us try to understand this a little better. What this thing is, this is the covariance of t and t prime that is the word for autocorrelation function in statistics. If you divide it by the covariance of this the and the and the standard deviation of this and that so as to normalize it. So, if you write it as uh, sigma 
x uh, sigma t, so how should I write this, sigma w t, sigma w t prime do, uh, and w t prime here over sigma w t, sigma w t prime where this is the standard deviation of w t and that is of w t prime and should be sigma squared here by definition it is equal to this quantity. Then this is of course equal to min t t prime over and we know what this is the square of this is 2 d t and 2 d has been set equal to 1 right. So, this is equal to t square root of uh, yeah square root of t t prime this is 2 d, uh, t and this is t prime and we are taking the standard deviation so root of t t prime and it is easy to see that this is equal to min t t prime over max t t prime the whole thing square root. That is a convenient way of writing, easy way of remembering this. Now, what can we say about the paths of this wt? Okay. It is clear formally that the Brownian particle has got Brownian motion has infinite velocity you know, because x squared scales like t, not x and therefore delta x over delta t is formally infinite you need put another delta x on top in order to bring it to a finite value right ok. So, what are these parts look like that is worth looking at and a number of results are known in one dimension Brownian path or sample paths of Brownian motion we are talking about Brownian motion starting at uh, the origin. So, here is x and uh, sorry here is t and w t the Wiener process starting here and this process takes off and does this kind of crazy thing it goes up and down etcetera and the following can be established rigorously from the properties of the Wiener process. The average is 0 we already know that. So, over all such sample paths you take the average it remains 0 here ok. But the question is is it differentiable or not is this differentiable and the answer is no I will just quote a number of results here. So, nowhere differentiable almost surely. So, non differentiable except on sets of measure 0 hmm? non differentiable almost surely. How badly is it non differentiable and there is an answer to that it is a continuous process and that is very very important to remember. Huh? In fact, uh, had we dropped this and had we required it to be stationary what would the process be? Pardon me? Ernst-Nolenbeck that is the only continuous Gaussian stationary Markov process and it follows that it has an exponential correlation and vice versa the converse is also true in that case. But the moment you make it non-stationary but require it to be continuous then you end up with Brownian motion. Okay. It is non-differentiable but it is continuous therefore there must be some kind of holder continuity for this process. It turns out that uh, the continuity looks like this w of t plus epsilon minus w t modulus hmm, is less than or equal to some constant times epsilon mod epsilon to the power beta where beta is less than half but can be arbitrarily close to half and not half except on sets of measure 0. Uh, 
arbitrarily close to half from below. So that sort of tells you how jagged these paths are. It is a measure of how jagged it is because you can see that this will imply the function is not differentiable because for differentiability, yeah, if you divide by epsilon, so it is clear that W t plus epsilon uh, minus W t divided by mod epsilon tends as epsilon tends to 0, it tends to infinity because of this property going like half. So, you divide here you are going to get a half little more than half in the denominator and it is going to go to infinity as epsilon goes to 0. So, it is therefore not differentiable, but this weirdness that it is holder continuous with an exponent which is arbitrarily close to half from below means that this increments in this process are acting somewhat like square root of time. This epsilon is like the increment in time. Right? So, it is acting like the square root of dt, the infinitesimal dt. One can formalize that uh, and then you have to be a little careful, but by a clever amendment of the rules of calculus, one can actually handle this process quite rigorously. Uh, Here is what happens or to continue on the sample, uh, another property of the sample path, you can ask uh, when does it cross 0 in a given time interval how long does it stay above the axis and how long below on the average and so on. In fact, you can ask where is this particle going to be most of the time and it turns out there is a law of the iterated logarithm. This is Kinchin's law So, you plot for Brownian motion starting at t equal to 0, you plot the following function. This function is square root of 2 d t log log 1 over t for small t, sufficiently small t, plot this. Okay. And you plot the negative of this function here, this is minus the square root of this stuff. And if this is 1 plus epsilon times that function and that is 1 minus epsilon times that function, so this is 1 times square root and this fellow is 1 plus epsilon times the square root here and similarly here. Okay. Then the statement is almost surely the particle is either here or here in this range for arbitrarily small epsilon. Okay. So, you, you not only have a statement about the probability density function of this x as a function of t or w as a function of t, but you also have a statement about where it actually is, what this part does and yet and yet the particle crosses the axis an infinite number of times, it does so in any arbitrarily small interval and you can in fact ask what is the measure of the 0 set, the set of points where it crosses the axis, so 0 set. This would correspond to the set by W t equal to 0 that 0 set in the limit has a fractal dimension which is a half. So, while it can go arbitrarily far away the 0 set is such that by the way this thing the fluctuations obviously they are going to go way up there way down here and that is why the variance itself will increase with t because the fluctuations are such that it is getting it is diffusing huh? although the mean remains 0 always. You can ask further interesting questions, you can ask uh, 
what is the f given given some t here what is the fraction of time for some some capital T starting at 0 what is the fraction of time that it spends above the real axis ab above the on the positive side hmm? and what is the fraction it spends on the negative side that is a random variable it is yes, but it is a random variable. Yes. Huh? Oh, yeah. One can ask what is the probability distribution of that random variable. So, let us suppose, no, I am being incoherent. You could ask uh, what if t is very large? You have a law of the la uh, iterated logarithm for t large as well. All you have to do is to replace that log log 1 over t by t. But that the crucial point is not that. The crucial point is this process is reinventing itself at every instant of time. It is what is called a martingale. I am not going to talk much about that, but we will see some consequences of what it does. It means that if you are here at this point, say you are here at that some instant of time, then the Brownian motion is as if it starts from there at this instant of time and it again behaves in precisely the same fashion as it behaved earlier here. So, at every point there is a law of the iterated logarithm at every time. The process has, the memory is very short, it is a Markov process. Okay. Now, one can ask uh, the probability distribution function. So, let T plus be the, uh, be the amount of time. such that w t is greater than 0 uh, for 0 less than t less than capital T. Okay. So, we look at the Brownian motion up to some capital T and ask what is the total time spent where it is on the positive side and what is the total spent time spent where it is on the negative side of the x axis. The PDF of T plus and similarly as you say T minus it is completely symmetric. PD of T plus is proportional to 1 over square root of T minus T plus. Okay. Which implies that the cumulative distribution function CDF of t plus it looks very much like the oscillator, the oscillator. Much time yeah the time instead of if you have a regular oscillator and you ask dt t is distributed uniformly over a period you ask what is the distribution of the angle it is precisely this 1 over square root here many such distributions. Okay. Now, the cumulative distribution function namely the probability that t plus is less than equal to some given value t f. This thing here of course, now is is equal to if you normalize it and you integrate this fellow from to 0 to t plus you get uh, 2 over pi sin inverse t plus over t. It should of course be 0 when t plus is 0 and it should be plus 1 when t is t plus equal to capital total probability must be equal to 1 right. And this is called the Levy arc sine law Okay, now, let us see what uh, the fact that these sample parts are irregular, very jagged, they have very specific kind of irregularity essentially characterized by the fact that uh, the, the holder continuity is half, essentially half. Huh? That says that the following property can be rigorously proved and this is part of what is called Eto calculus. I will mention only the rudiments of it. Essentially, one formula, and it's uh, the following. What one can prove, what one can prove, is that for Brownian motion or a Wiener process, 
if you have on the time axis any four points. So, let us start with T 1 some point T 2 and then some may be T 3 and some T 4 and you ask what is this quantity W of W T 2 minus W T 1. So, this minus that and you multiply it by W T 4 minus W T 3 this thing here. The value of this product here is equal to the overlap between the two intervals. So, you have one interval from T 1 to T 2 another interval from T 3 to T 4 and the overlap between these two is this guy here. So, this is equal to overlap length of the overlap between T 2 T 1 and T 4 T 3. it has an immediate consequence. This by the way this statement can be proved by looking at the correlation the autocorrelation okay. and then it is a simple proof here. Now, this has immediate consequences. The first consequence is that d w t d w t d w t equal to d t okay. because imagine a completely overlapped infinitesimal in interval. Okay. The length of it is d t and that is the square of d w t. So, this is the one that formalizes the fact that this d w the increment in the Wiener process is like the square root of the increment in time. Okay. This immediately has the following consequence. The several ways of doing this and what we are interested in is asking for the behavior of or the properties of functionals of Brownian motion. So, x is a random variable in the normal diffusion problem now you ask what does f of x look like where f of x is some function etcetera. So, we are going to consider what happens if you had a functional I just write it as f w t you could extend it to the case where it has an explicit t dependence as well we will do that in a second. What happens to this functional and what it is what does its differential look like ok. What you have to do is to do a Taylor series about any particular point and keep track of the fact that this thing here is like d t ok. So, we will assume that uh, assume that f of whatever argument f of x is a continuous twice differentiable at least twice differentiable we will consider functions which are at least twice differentiable functions of the argument then we could ask what is d f w t this is equal to f prime w t d w t that is the first term right. But that is not enough because it is a function of a function there could also be a, an explicit time dependence here. So, let me in fact write that time dependence let us look at the more general case where you have uh, this then is uh, well let me use the following notation f prime and I will explain this notation in a second. So, d f of w t equal to this plus a portion coming from the fact that the second term 
in dWt will still be of order dt and that term turns out to be 1 half f double prime wt t dwt dwt plus delta f of wt t over delta t dt. But we know that this is dt, so it gets added to this term. Okay, now this is the fundamental rule of Ito calculus. where uh, d f over d w t is equal to f prime d 2 f over d w t. So, you differentiate with respect to w t alone those are the two derivatives you already assumed that uh, well I should really write f of x comma t is twice differentiable in x. Okay. Now, the addition of this uh, extra piece here helps you that is the amendment that the rules of calculus need in order to be applicable to as singular objects as Brownian parts as a Wiener process. Because this, the this is the differential form, the integral form of this will tell you what the correction is in normal cases. So, remember this rule is here. Hmm? Now, let us look at what is the integral of say t 1 to t 2 t equal to t 1 to t equal to t 2 of uh, something like f prime of w t. Let us look for the moment at functions which are not explicitly time dependent. So, you see what the correction is d w t what is this guy equal to? Hmm? Well, we are integrating both sides of this equation here and we are asking what is this fellow equal to. Hmm? So, it is this integral by definition it is a differential therefore, you can write this as clearly f w t 2 minus f w t 1 that is certainly true. But then there is a correction due to this piece here. So, it becomes minus half integral t 1 to t 2 d t uh, f double prime of w t d t. So, there is this extra piece which you require. Okay. So, let us see what this is doing for us what it implies. Uh, let us first look at a case where this f prime of w t let us say is w t itself. Then it tells you that integral t 1 to t 2 in time w t d w t I should write t equal to t 1 t equal to this is equal to by this applying this theorem applying this blindly it is the integral of this fellow which is w t squared over 2. So, it is half w t 2 squared minus half mi half comes out minus w t 1 squared hmm. minus half well f double prime is 1 in this case. So, it is just t 2 minus t 1 
but this is equal to T2 right we already had that overlap rule and so the square of Wt squared is T itself. So, this is equal to half T2 minus T1 minus half minus T1 is equal to 0 is identically equal to 0. because of the way this Eto calculus works. Now, what does that actually mean? I mean this is an important result because it tells you this thing tells you that there is a specific interpretation being given to this, uh, this process here, uh, this integral here. So, it says that what we mean by that integral. So, since we can write T equal to T1 to T equal to T2 the uh, wt dwt can be written in the following way so i start with time t uh, time 0 time t and i break this up into n parts so there's time t n and time t n plus 1 is equal to t and this is 0 so this is t1 this is t2 etc break it up then this is equal to limit n tends to infinity summation from i equal to 1 to n times w t i times d w, but this d w is w t i plus 1 minus w t sub i here. It is the forward difference Oh, sorry, I am sorry. Yeah, I, I chose it to be 0. Yeah, I started with 0. Yeah. yeah. This is a general result. This follows a general result here, but you can start at any point in this process. I start from 0, and it is the meaning of this. So, it is this quantity that has been written there, and this follows is, is this difference here in the limit as the number of uh, intervals uh, number of uh, subdivisions becomes infinity. Hmm? Now, this is the forward increment and there is a current value of the variable. We know that the overlap between these two is 0 because this goes up to T i and this goes beyond that. There is no overlap between these two integrals and these two factors. Therefore, by our basic rule for Brownian parts, this is they are independent, this is 0. Well, that explains why you get 0 here. Okay. Now, you could have interpreted it differently when you do normal uh, integration from a summation you convert it integration. There is no reason, so you normally write f of x dx etcetera. Now, you write it as a sum this dx is say x plus d delta x minus x, but this quantity here f of x is x at which point? It could be at x plus delta x over 2, it could be at any combination of f at x and f of x plus delta x. So, this is Ito's choice. This is a specific choice of uh, the way this integral is interpreted the interpretation. So, this this the fact that uh, these two factors no overlap and this guy here is the forward increment. It is this that is gives you the Eto calculus and all the other properties that I wrote down. So, clearly it says that there are other choices possible. You could choose this to be T i plus 1 for example uh, yeah. or you could choose it to be T i plus T i plus 1 divided by 2. So, you have any number of choices here and each time you get a calc stochastic calculus. Okay. Now, if you choose the Eto interpretation and you have this feature then and only then does it turn out that the interpretation we have for the general Langevin equation or general Eto equation now. So, our general Eto equation 
stochastic equation, I should not call it Langevin anymore. This is of the form some process dx is equal to some f of x dt plus g of x. Remember the Langevin equation that we wrote down with a drift term and a diffusion term. There was a g of x times we called it white noise and put this as x dot, but the correct way of writing it is with the dt here and this is dw. This, hmm? this is an Ito equation, this is to be understood in the sense of Ito. So, the x here and if it was time dependent the t is such that this is the x at instant t and this is the forward increment in the Wiener process. Okay. You need that interpretation, otherwise it is ambiguous, multiplicative stochastic process is definitely ambiguous. So, the question is you have a noise in physical terms, you have a noise that is dependent on the state variable itself. The question is state variable at what time? Okay. It is the state variable when you write the increment in x, it is the state variable at time t where this dWt is the forward increment between t plus delta t and t. Okay. Then this implies and is implied by the Fokker-Planck equation that we wrote down for this process. Hmm? It implies that the probability density of this thing is delta p over delta t is equal to this fellow here is equal to minus delta over delta x f of x p plus half g squared of x d 2 p over d x 2. Okay. So, when you have a non-trivial uh, noise, a multiplicative noise, you have to interpret it in the Ito sense and then this is true. The Stratonovich interpretation where this would be T i plus 1 would give you a different Fokker-Planck equation for the same stochastic differential equation interpreted in that sense. The point is that uh, the physics has to be the same in both cases. So, what would ha happen there is that you would have what is called a spurious drift term. So, in going from the you go from the engineering equation to two different stochastic differential equations, so as to get the same master equation once again for uh, the random variable because that is its moments are physically measurable. So, you start with an equation between averages the so called engineering equation, you add noise to it if it happens to be stochastic uh, uh, multiplicative noise, you have to then specify is the equation this uh, equation in the Ito sense or in the Stratonovich sense or anything in between there are other interpretations. And then each time the prescription to go from the stochastic differential equation to the master equation changes in such a way that the final master equation is exactly the same for a given physical process. Okay. We have used all the way while I have used the Ito uh, interpretation. It is sort of satisfying because of this that it is not anticipatory, that it is a current <laughs> dependence on the rate at the uh, of on the state variable at the current time and then the forward increment, okay. but it is not sacred, it is not sacred. In fact, in physics very often one uses the Stratonovich interpretation, okay. but then you have what is called the spurious drift term, there is a correction to this fellow here and the prescription to go from here to the stochastic uh, to the Fokker-Planck equation changes in the two cases. We have consistently used the uh, Ito equation. Okay. Now, of course, if you if you use the calculus carefully, then questions of uniqueness come for solutions of this process, questions of uniqueness arise. And here is an example due to Ito himself, by the way I should give a reference to this whole business, it is uh, the mathematical treatment can be made very rigorous. And one of the best places for it is the original book by Ito himself. So, Ito and McKean, it is called diffusion processes.
recall that we called an equation like this a diffusion process we called x a diffusion process and you have to uh, you have to worry about the uniqueness of the solution to this sort of equation we solved this for the onstein lullenbeck case it was completely trivial this was a constant that one was linear in x and then it didn't matter we wrote down the solution but if you do it rigorously properly then you have to be a little careful because you could have non uniqueness and here's an example due to ito himself so we'll work backwards write the equation down so if you have uh, example this is due to ito and watanabe and the equation uh, is the following x equal to wt cubed for example mm. you took take this example it's a nice functional of brown in motion right mm. then what does the equation give you it says dx equal to f of x that is 3 w t squared. So, it is 3 times x to the power 2 thirds d w t, uh, d t plus the second derivative you have differentiate this this is 3 x squared uh, 3 w squared and that is equal to 6 w divided by a 2 and w is x to the 1 third and the 2 goes away in the calculus. So, get plus uh, 3 times x to the 1 third d w t. Sorry, that is the coefficient of uh, how did I write this? It is the other way about. This is f prime and then you had to do a d w t, right? So, it was this is dt the correction part. So, if I ask what is the solution to this equation we know this because we work backwards to get this equation. So, if I ask what process is this x you would say it is w t cubed from this guy, but you could also put 0 there and it gets gives you a solution. So, you have this or that therefore, the uniqueness of solutions is not guaranteed. Fortunately, this is a kind of uh, academic example fortunately, it turns out that if you put in sufficient uh, holder conditions on the continuity of this process, then you get unique solutions. For instance, if you can show that uh, uh, mod x at some time t minus x at time t prime is less than sorry the function. So, if this fellow is some function x of w t if you can show that uh, x of in some alpha minus x of some beta modulus is less than uh, some constant times modulus of alpha minus beta for all alpha and beta all argument then that suffices to show that uh, the solution is unique here. This is not this does not satisfy that these two guys are not smooth enough at the origin they are too singular at the origin, but if you have something milder like this then the solution is unique and that is what happens in most physical examples. Okay. Now, you can ask can this whole thing be generalized, you know? but before that let me uh, point out I think I have run out of time, but I should point out what the Feynman Cartes formula is at the very least. Okay. Mm. This requires a bit of a preamble. Let me, let me again motivate this on physical grounds. So, let me give a little preamble to this recall that the original diffusion equation. So, let us write it in the physics notation our original diffusion equation was of the form delta p over delta t for 
the position of a Brownian particle d d 2 p over d x 2 and you can ask what is the solution to this equation hmm, for some given initial distribution not necessarily a delta function. Then of course you take the original uh, Gaussian solution use that as a kernel for the green function for the diff operator diff differential operator and you integrate over the initial distribution whatever it is. So, you write the solution p of x t equal to 1 over square root of 4 pi d t an integral d x prime hmm, over all x prime infinity e to the minus x minus x prime whole squared over 4 d t you could have started at any point t minus t naught the initial time you would have replaced this by t minus t naught. So, we are talking about processes starting from the at specified at x equal to 0 this multiplied by p whatever be the initial p initial of x prime this this was p of x at 0. It acts as a green function here. Now, the Schrodinger equation for a free particle has exactly the same behavior. Right? So, there you have delta psi of x t over delta t equal to i h cross times that is minus h cross squared. So, like write that as minus i h cross whole squared. So, this is equal to i h cross by 2 n d 2 psi over d x 2. This 2 has a similar solution except there is this i. So, it is as if the d were an imaginary quantity and then it is not clear if this this is an oscillatory function in that case it is not clear if uh, this thing converges. But formally if you do a Wick rotation here in time and go to imaginary time i times t then the two problems are mathematically equivalent and well defined. So, you have exactly the same sort of solution this uh, this would imply that uh, psi of x comma t is equal to 1 over square root of 4 pi and then instead of uh, d you would replace it by i h cross over 2 m t integral d x prime e to the minus x minus x prime whole squared divided by uh, whatever it is 4 times d d is this. So, twice 2 i h cross t and then an m or something like that times psi initial of x prime. And if you recall this is the starting point of the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics then you do time slicing and stuff like that and you get the path uh, integral formulation of quantum mechanics right. Now, Mark Katz noticed this and said now this operates in two different can give a form give a clever formula which essentially says that you can use this fact the fundamental Gaussian solution in order to write down solutions to some deterministic equations or conversely starting with the deterministic differential equation which is essentially the diffusion equation with a potential term on it. You can find expectation values of certain functionals of Brownian motion. It works in both directions and in its simplest form it looks like this. So, this is the so called Feynman Cartes formula. and let me write it in the simplest form it is got all kinds of generalizations higher dimensions etcetera, but here is what it looks like. Suppose you have a partial differential equation a parabolic partial differential equation in one space dimension and one time dimension equal to let us write the standard diffusion equation down. this is the PDF of a Wiener process if you like, but along with that let us suppose there is an extra term 
b of x times u of x comma t. If this were the heat conduction equation, it is like there is some external cooling which is state dependent, x dependent here. Huh? Or in the context of the Schrodinger equation, it is like a potential somewhere. Then the question is what is the solution? Huh? You have to specify an initial condition and the initial condition is, so some conditions are put on this, this is a non-negative. continuous function and u of x 0 is equal to some specified initial fun function. So, this is u naught of x and we will assume this to be continuous bounded. So, it is a continuous bounded function. Then the statement is that the solution of this, the unique solution of this has the following form. It is equal to the average value of e to the power minus integral 0 to t v of x, uh, v of w t d t hmm, times u naught of w t where I have to say what is w t and what this average is over hmm, where w t equal to standard Wiener process or Brownian motion, standard Brownian motion started at x at t equal to 0. So, you have Brownian motion started from wherever you want the solution, whichever point you want it at. And then you let it go and equal to average over all, all walks, all random walks. all sample paths subject to the above conditions namely all Brownian motion starting at x at t equal to 0 at any no starting at x is going forward right in time and then you do this integral. Okay. So, this works both ways. If you want this where you have an arbitrary functional out here and here some given functional then you have this back again. Hmm. Well, the simplest case would be you v equal to 0 then you see where this is coming from. You put v equal to 0 this goes away you are going to take the initial point and you are going to put the Gaussian kernel and you are going to integrate that would be one way of computing the average and that is exactly the solution we wrote down to the diffusion equation. But this generalizes it to the case of arbitrary functions here subject to very mild conditions. Okay. And this is just the path I mean if you weak rotate back. If you weak rotate back it is just the, the path integral, Feynman path integral for, for, for the potential V of x exactly. But what is interesting is this is capable of enormous generalization first of all to higher dimensional Brownian motion for which we know how to write uh, uh, you have a general equation of the form uh, dx equal to f of x dt plus g of x dwt where this is an n dimensional vector so is this 
this is a new dimensional noise and this is an n times d matrix with suitable conditions on the g's. We know how to write the Fokker Planck equation down. Now, for the process x, a general diffusion process x, you have an analog of this formula. It does not have to be standard Brownian motion alone. That would correspond to the case where f is 0 and g is 1. But you can instead of w t, you can use x and you can write a generalized formula once again for a more complicated equation here, which involves the first derivative of this u with respect to x with that drift term and the second derivative with that diffusion term here. Okay. So, instead of this operator, you replace it with g squared times this guy plus f times f of uh, u uh, f of x times uh, the first derivative d u over delta x and it is still true. So, higher dimensions, more complicated parabolic equations, it still works this formula and people have been at it for a very long time. I should finally mention that uh, the case where this fellow is linear in x and that too is linear in x is the famous Black-Scholes model that is used in uh, financial mathematics and it corresponds to exponential Brownian motion. So, the random variable is e to the w t if you like times some constants okay. and then an explicit function of t to take care of Ito calculus once again. Okay. So, that is uh, what I wanted to say here in this context. We have uh, this entire course we have sort of uh, started with very simple Langevin dynamics and come back to it in a very general form here. On the way, we went through all kinds of uh, applications of Langevin dynamics. That is a paradigm, that is a model and I try to point out very briefly that the same model is generalized to the case of fields, order parameter fields and then it has connections to both equilibrium and non-equilibrium phase transitions, how with the help of the Landau functional you got a handle on non-equilibrium critical exponents including dynamic critical exponents. We did not take an excursion into critical phenomena per se, that is a separate topic by itself, but we did study some linear response theory on the way, both classical and quantum and some topics uh, we have run out of time and most notably chemical kinetics and the thermodynamics of very small systems, all the fluctuation theorems. These are two notable exceptions, perhaps at some future date. Okay, stop here.